History Spotlight, brought to you by HEC Media and the Missouri Historical Society. Hello, I'm Dr. Jody Sowell, president of the Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis, and this is History Spotlight. Initiated in December 1958, the St. Louis Baby Tooth Survey measured the effects of radioactive fallout and nuclear energy on children's health. Public historian Andrew Wonko gives us the details of how the survey was conducted. In the years after the global reshuffling of power that happened in World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union both tested dozens and dozens of nuclear weapons above the ground. These huge nuclear explosions were happening on faraway Pacific islands and in the middle of deserts, but nobody really knew what the long-term effects of these explosions on humanity were going to be. The new benchmarks of power they were achieving were terrifying. In 1954, for instance, the United States tested its Castle Bravo nuclear bomb. That produced an explosion of 15 megatons. That was a thousand times more powerful than the bomb that hit Hiroshima, Japan in 1945. Citizens were getting concerned about what all these tests might do to humanity. Because even though they were happening in places far away, the cloud of radioactive particles they produced, known as fallout, was free to blow wherever the wind might carry it. In 1958, a group of St. Louis scientists, community leaders, and professors founded the St. Louis Committee for Nuclear Information. It was their goal to put some real data behind the concerns everybody had about what nuclear tests were doing to the global population. They knew this was gonna be a huge problem though, because if nuclear fallout was actually affecting the entire world, it would show up equally in everyone. What would you compare it against? They needed some way to test human bodies from before nuclear testing began and after after nuclear testing began and compare the two. For the answer to that, they turned to children's teeth. In lost baby teeth, they had an endlessly replenishing supply of testable material. They could mine the collections of medical institutions to find teeth that had been lost long before nuclear testing had started, and they could compare the two. If radioactive elements showed up more inside children's teeth of today, they knew that they had their smoking gun. The study itself, the St. Louis Baby Tooth Survey, was led by Washington University professor Dr. Louise Rice, and they made it their goal to collect as many teeth as possible from St. Louis school kids. Kids from all over the St. Louis region sent in their teeth by mail. They dropped them off at collection spots around their schools or at dentist visits. In response for donating their tooth, they got a button that said, I gave my tooth to science. And it was amazing the response that this team got. Within two years, they were collecting 750 new baby teeth a week. And within these teeth was exactly the evidence they were looking for. The levels of strontium-90, a radioactive byproduct element created in nuclear explosions, was 50 times higher in children born after 1963 than it was in children born in 1950. It was the results of the St. Louis Baby Tooth Survey that helped commit President John F. Kennedy to sign the Partial Test Ban Treaty with the United Kingdom and the Soviet Union, ending the above-ground testing of nuclear weapons by those three countries. The St. Louis Baby Tooth Survey continues to give back to science as well. A number of other baby tooth surveys have been used to prove all sorts of scientific things throughout time, including in 2015 when the lead pollution crisis in Flint, Michigan's water supply was exposed using the exact same process of checking children's lost baby teeth. In 2021, 100,000 of the original St. Louis teeth were donated to Harvard University, where researchers continue to use them to study the long-term effects of environmental effects experienced in childhood. So it's an incredible story of how St. Louis helped stop nuclear testing by turning toward the thing we all lose, our teeth, when we're children. Next week on History Spotlight, the first president to ride in an airplane and how that flight is connected to St. Louis. To learn more about the Missouri Historical Society, visit mohistory.org.